Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. I'll be reading this morning from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. And this is what it says. From Paul, God called me to be an apostle of Christ Jesus because that is what God wanted. Also from Sosthenes, our brother in Christ, to the church of God in Corinth, to you who are, have been made holy in Christ Jesus. You were called to be God's holy people with all people everywhere who pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ their Lord and ours. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God for you because of the grace God has given you in Christ Jesus. I thank God because in Christ you have been made rich in every way, in all your speaking, in all your knowledge, just as our witness about Christ has been guaranteed to you, so you have every gift from God while you wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to come again. Jesus will keep you strong until the end <clears throat> so that there will be no wrong in you on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. God who has called you to share everything with His Son in Jesus Christ our Lord is faithful. Pray with me. Lord, You are faithful. You are good. It's not our goodness or, or our faithfulness that, that You're here. You're here because of your goodness and your faithfulness. May we never take it for granted. Amen. Anyone who knows my father well knows that he loves a bargain. And most often he gets a bargain when he buys in bulk. So fairly often when someone says, hey, I saw your father, I'll say, Costco? <laughs> and I'll say, yeah, how'd you know? I say, well, it just goes along with with getting a bargain buying in bulk and the only thing that he likes better than getting a bargain buying in bulk is getting a rebate now that's the trifecta that's when he's in his happy place if he can buy in bulk get a bargain and get a rebate oh he's it <laughs> he's totally done um there's there was a time when he was getting rebate after rebate. He was rebate rich. He had gotten so many rebates. And he would send them out to his children. So it wasn't unusual at all to go to the mailbox. And there was a gift. A gift for sitting in the mailbox. And it was a surprise. It might be from Procter & Gamble or it might be from Union Carbide. But there was a check sitting for you in your mailbox. And, and I, I remember one real well. Because it wasn't just a gift that was a nice to have. It was one that I really needed. And I opened up the mailbox and opened up the, the check. And then there it was. Well, it was a Thursday at the end of the day. So I, I put it on my, my desk at home. So when I left the next day, I would see it and, and take it to the bank. Well, I left early, early the next morning. And I was in a bit of a rush. And I didn't get home until late Friday afternoon. And the banks had already closed. So I thought, well, when they open on Monday, I'll, I'll put the check in my car, and that way I'll remember to cash the check on, on Monday. 
Well, I put it in the glove compartment of my car, and, and I forgot about it. I forgot about it until one day I opened up my glove compartment, and, and there was the check. And written across the top of the check, it says, void after 90 days. That was December 12th, 1980. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's no good anymore, but I held on to it. I held on to it because in this is a truth. In this is a truth that there's a difference between a, a gift that's given and receiving a gift. Putting a gift into practice. Putting it to purpose. There's a difference between putting it into practice, using it, putting it into service. There's a difference between giving, being given a gift and, and putting it into to service. And that's what I wanted to talk about this morning. The Apostle Paul, right here at the, at the beginning of, of 1 Corinthians, he's talking, he says to hear all people everywhere who pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that, that he's not just talking to, to one church 2,000 years ago in a, ten, in a city called Corinth. He's talking to all Christians everywhere who pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what he says. He says in verse 5, you've been made rich. Why have you been made rich? Because, verse 7, he says, because you have every gift from God. And in verse 8, he says, so Jesus will keep you strong. That you and I, we're rich because we have every gift, so Jesus will keep us strong. That we have every gift. That you and I have every gift. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. Gifts that have been given. Gifts that have been given. And there is that thread that goes from the beginning of 1 Corinthians all the way to the end of Corinthians. It's even more than a thread. It's more like a rope or, or, or a bridge that goes from the, the beginning of Corinthians to the end. This, this, this image that you've been given gifts. And the first gift that I want to talk about is you've been given the gift of His Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 12. This is what Paul says. He says, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things freely given to us by God. That's what a gift is. It's, a, it's something that's not deserved. It's not earned. It's, it's, it's freely given. And God's given not the Spirit of the world, but His Spirit. His Spirit, His Spirit that, that, that urges us, that gives us eyes to see what, what we can't see on our own. Tony Campolo tells a story about a friend of his who was a pastor, and he was trying to get the, the, the leaders of his church to follow the Spirit, to develop eyes that they would, would see, not just what was naturally seen, but to see how God's hand moved and to, and to follow God's Spirit. Well, one of the fellows that was having trouble with this in this pastor's church was a deacon. And so the minister told him, he said, well, pray about it and see what God's, where God's leading you. Well, he sensed that God was leading him to organize a group of people to go to the nursing home and to have a, a, a church service once a month. Well, he wasn't going to preach or speak in that service. He wasn't going to pray in that service. And he certainly wasn't going to sing in that service. And so it, but he sensed that God was calling him to, to organize that service. So that's what he did. He got a group of people. They went down once a month to the nursing home. And he would go stand in the corner. And the first month that they were there, the, this old fellow in a wheelchair came, wheeled through, and, came, and just grabbed his hand and held his hand during the service. At the end of the service, the, the old man wheeled away. And each month, the same thing would happen. The old man would come in his wheelchair. He'd grab the deacon's hand and sit there during the service. Then one month they came, and he didn't see the old man in the wheelchair anywhere. So he asked the nurse where the man might be. The nurse said, well, he's in his last days. He's here, but he's unconscious. If you want to see him, he's in the, the third room down there on the right. 
Well, the deacon wasn't accustomed to seeing those kinds of things, but he felt the Holy Spirit give him an urge, giving him a nudge to, to, to go down that way. So he went in the room, and sure enough, uh, there was the old man. He was unconscious. He had tubes and, and wires going from him, and he, he was slow going, but the deacon went in, and he, he held the man's hand. Then he sensed that, that God was giving him a nudge to, to pray. So he prayed, and at the end of his prayer, he squeezed the old man's hand. And the old man squeezed his hand back. Well, then the deacon began to cloud up. He was afraid that he, he, he was going to start crying, and somebody was going to come in. And, and he was wiping away his cheek as he was leaving. And, and coming in the door while he was leaving was a woman who said, Oh, I'm so glad you're here. He's been waiting for you. The deacon said, what? He said, she said, he didn't want to leave until he held the hand of Jesus one more time. And I told him that, that he would, after he died, he, he could talk to Jesus and hold Jesus' hand, and, and, and that would be fine. She said, my father said, that's not what I'm talking about. That every month... Jesus comes to the nursing home, and he holds his hand. And he didn't want to die until he held his hand one more time. It's the Spirit of God. Not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit of God that lives in you and me. The way that Paul put it in 1 Corinthians 3.16 is, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? In the Spirit, the Spirit of God, Paul tells us in, in 2 Timothy 1 7 that it's, it's not a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and discipline. Power and love and discipline that, that leads us. Not where it's easy to go, not where we naturally want to go, not where, but it listens. It helps us listen and, and it leads us where God wants us to go. It's a gift, a gift of His Spirit that's been given to you and to me. But as I learned a, a while back, there's a difference between being given a gift and receiving it, putting it to use, putting it to practice, putting it to purpose. And for God's sake, God's sake, put his, his spirit to practice in your life. Well, you and I have received a gift. Paul tells us that we've received the gift of his spirit, but we've also received the, the gift of love. Now, I think any time a preacher begins to talk about love, everybody kind of perks up. And uh, I, we, we like it when... Preachers preach about love. I heard one person say that love is that feeling that you feel when you feel something you've never felt before. And we get an idea that, that love is this feeling, this feeling that takes us over. And that's a wonderful part of love. It's a natural part of love. But the gift, the gift of love that, that the Bible talks about you and me receiving is, is if, if we think of it as that natural love, we're going to be going down the wrong road that Paul in 1 Corinthians verse 13 chapter 13 verse 4 he's not talking about a feeling at all when he says love is patient I'm going to pause right there for just a minute do you always feel patient he says love is kind do you always feel kind Love is not jealous. Love does not brag. Love is not arrogant. It does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own. In other words, it doesn't just do what's best for us. It does what's best for the other person. I remember I was about five years old, and my mother was having a family devotion. My brother and sister and I were sitting on the bed. Mom was, was reading from a child's devotional book. I was about five years old, and she said, Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, being five years old, I took that quite literally. 
And I began to panic because I knew who lived next door. It was Kelly Frazier. She was two years older than me. She was a foot taller and she was twice as strong. So I blurted out, I can't love Kelly Frazier. My mother said, what? I said, I can't kiss Kelly Frazier. If I kiss Kelly Frazier, she's going to knock the tar out of me. I can't kiss Kelly Frazier. Mom said, calm down. I said, but Jesus said I've got to love my neighbor and my neighbor is Kelly Frazier. She said, no, 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 no. He's, it's not talking about a feeling and that you kiss Callie Frazier, that Jesus is talking about doing what's best for the other person and not just what's best for you. Now, mom never had New Testament Greek class. But when she said that, she knocked it out of the park. Because that's exactly what it's talking about right here. Love does not seek its own that it's not just a, a feeling, that it does not seek its own, that it, and to keep on, it does not ta- is not provoked, it does not take into account a wrong suffered. In other words, it doesn't make lists. It doesn't say, well, I've done this, what are you going to do for me? It doesn't wait until it's, it's, it's first loved that it loves first. It goes on to say that That love does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never fails. Paul says this is the greatest of the gifts. And a love that never fails, well, feelings fail. Feelings fail, and they fail often. Because very often, feelings have more to do with our last meal or how much sleep we had. Feelings have more to do with irritability than they do with the Spirit of God and and the gift of love that's been given to you and to me. It's a gift where Jesus makes his home in our will, not in our feelings, but in our will. And he begins to give us power. Power, power that we don't have to love not just the lovable, not just when it's most natural, but a love that doesn't make lists and doesn't seek its own. That's the kind of love that you and I were given as a gift. But there's a difference. There's a difference between being given a gift and and receiving it, putting it used, putting it to practice. For God's sake, put the gift of love to practice. Put it to practice. Well, this morning I not only want to talk about the gift of love, the gift of His Spirit, but the last thing that I want to talk about is the, the gift of the gospel. It's the very end of the book of 1 Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1, this is what it says. Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel, which I also preached to you, which also you received, in which you also stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast to the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance. Now we're getting there. First importance, what we've been given. I delivered to you first importance, what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture. And that He was buried, and that He was raised on the third day according to the Scripture. The first great doctrine of the Christian church is that the gospel, the good news, was ushered in by Jesus Christ on a cross. That a a new creation, a new beginning, a new kingdom was started in the here and now when he gave his life on the cross for, for you and for me. Redemption is what he gave us. He forgave all that's past. That a real change came in the universe for you and me. A gift of forgiveness, redemption for all that's present and all that would be. But he didn't stop at the cross. He rose again on the third day. And that's the the one great fact 
of the Christian faith. One, the first great doctrine is, is redemption, and the first great fact is, is the resurrection. That he rose to live his life through you and through me. That we might see beyond what's natural and what's most obvious. Sonderstrom Air Force Base is uh, in Greenland. It's one of the coldest Air Force bases on earth. It's not the coldest, but it's one of the coldest Air Force bases. So when folks are stationed there, usually they don't want to be stationed there. Well, the story that I read is a story about a time a while back when there was an air disaster at Sonderstrom Air Force Base. 22 people were killed, and it fell to the, the chaplain there on the base collect the bodies of those people and to comfort their friends well assigned to this chaplain was a young lieutenant and this lieutenant was the the mortuary officer that was to help him the two of them were to get volunteers to help collect up those bodies to put them in body bags it was grueling work in the cold there at Sonderstrom. They started early in the morning, and they didn't finish until late, late that night. Each of them went to their room, except for the young lieutenant. And the young lieutenant went to the chaplain's room. He knocked on the door, and when the chaplain opened the door, there standing outside the door was the young lieutenant, and, and he was weeping. He turned to the chaplain, and he said, as we were picking up the bodies today, I realized something. I realized that the only other people out there with us were the people who go to church here. I've always been an unbeliever, and I used to ridicule these same people who were out there with us. Yet they're the only persons who would or perhaps could do what we had to do today. It must have been their Christian spirit that could help them see beyond the horror to the hope. To see beyond the horror, to see the hope, that's what the Spirit of Christ does in you and me. To see beyond the heart, to see beyond the hardship, to see beyond the heartache, to see the hope. It's a power that we don't have. And the risen Christ who comes to, to live his life in you and me, that's the strength that he gives. It's a gift. It's a gift. But there's a, a distance between a, a gift that's given and a gift that's received, a gift that's, that's put into practice. That on the cross, Jesus gave us the, the gift of, of redemption, the gift of forgiveness. But we don't receive that gift until by repentance we put it to practice. Oh, we can marvel at the strength of His forgiveness, but until we repent and we, we turn from what we're doing to turn back toward Him, we've not received that gift. He's given us the gift of His resurrection of the risen Christ alive in us. It's a gift that's been given, but it really hasn't been received until it's been put into, into practice, into purpose. This morning, it may be that um, in your head you knew that, that Jesus died for your forgiveness. But in your heart, but in your heart, that's been something very different. Maybe you've been dealing with shame or brokenness, hardship, heartache, horror. That on the cross, Jesus took all those things that would destroy us. And he took away their power. And when he rose again to live his life through you and me, he rose that we, we might put his spirit to practice 
that on the inside of us, we might invite him to live, to take all those things that would destroy us and to use his power to see a hope, a hope beyond, beyond the horror, beyond the hardship, beyond the heartache. And it may be this morning that that you want to invite His Spirit to live in you because you've never done that before. Or it may be that, that you knew that He forgave you on the cross, but that part of, of turning, of repenting, and turning toward Him is something you've never done to receive that forgiveness. I want to invite you to pray with me now. Let's pray. Jesus, this day is the day that we have an opportunity to receive the gift of of the good news of a new life, of a new creation, of of a new kingdom ushered in right now in the middle of this old one where you live your life, where we humble ourselves ask for repentance and we begin to change and turn we need strength we don't have to receive this gift this gift of the gospel but you do have that power so we ask also for your holy spirit to make its its home right in our hearts that your home in our hearts might give us the strength we don't have to ask for that repentance and have power over the hardship, over the heartache, over the shame and over the sin. And all those things that would destroy us, that they have no power over us this day. Lord, it may be that there are folks here this morning that thought of love as that feeling and not a gift that you give so much, that is rooted in a will that you have power to change. Lord, we need your strength. It may be that there's somebody that we've been bitter. Somebody that, that we have been holding on to resentment or anger. You have strength we don't have. Not only to forgive us, but to help us forgive that person and and that we might turn. And that in its place, we don't put tolerance, we put love. A love that seeks their best. A love that doesn't make lists anymore and decide who's higher and who's lower. But a love that chooses to love first, not just when we're loved back. Love breathes in strength and power through your Holy Spirit. And may the, the strength, the power, and the peace of your Holy Spirit be the gift that we receive this morning. And we begin to be transformed. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, Just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, Thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at 
RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.